Welcome to Pro Animator 7. We are so excited about this new release. It's all about lighting. It'll help you get that big stage lighting look that's so popular today. Now this is only a very quick overview of what's possible. So now, the first time you run the program, uh, hopefully it looks like this for you so you can follow along. If it doesn't, come down here and click the animation button and that will put things into this layout. If you are an old time user, the first thing to notice is usually people ask, how do I get back that three point lighting that I had before? So we've got these things up here now called lighting rigs. Lighting rigs are where all of your old uh, style three point lighting setups are stored. So to apply these to a scene, what you do is you can either drag and drop it down into the scene like this, or you can double click on it. If you have lights already, it'll give you this little warning that says, do you want to replace the lights or add the lights? In this case, we're going to replace. And uh, there you see the three lights are set up to be just like this Patriot, okay? Now, um, these are now draggable objects. So you can click on them and select them. And when they are selected, you'll see their controls are down here. And also they light up here in our object list. So uh, once a light is selected, you can now come to the object controls. This is all for customization though. And then you can use custom colors, adjust individual cone lengths, make it shadow casting, or even whether it casts light. A lot of times uh, these visual effects are going to create light beams and fixtures and make everything look really fancy, but you don't want it to cast lights. So here's where you turn it off. Now, um, if you want to start from scratch, let's show you how to do that. I'm going to select the light track and do delete track and get rid of that. When um, And then we're going to start off by adding a floor. So we're going to come here, go to ground, and at this point now, we have a floor, um, but of course there are no lights in the scene. Whenever there are no light tracks, there's always a key and fill. All right, just remember that. So first big thing is how to create a light track. So you come over here and you click on this little button there, or from the track command menus, do add light track. Okay, that'll create a track with poses and transitions, just like objects uh, and cameras. If you double click here, you'll get another pose and the transition connects the two poses. Okay, click on a pose and hit the delete button to get rid of it. So now this pose is up way high. There it is right there. Uh, that's the first light that's created. You see there's only one light, but it's very easy to add more than one light. You just, uh, you just type a number or drag it out to be whatever the new light is. We've got parallel lights, point lights like these, or spotlights. So if we switch it over to spots, uh, you can now start to see that all these guys have uh, lighting in common. You can select different colors. Uh, you can adjust their positions. You can adjust their spotlight angles like this, and of course the feathering used. Now, this is where it starts getting really handy. Normal 3D programs, you have one light on one track. And so any change you want to make um, takes a lot of time. Here, it's very fast to set up. And you get to see sort of the gestalt of how it all works. You act like a director. You know, it's like, give me lights all spread out. Boom, it's done. Now, right here is where we control what the lights are pointed at. We'll get into that in detail. And we also have some things in here for like, you know, random positions, random rotations, so that it doesn't look like a computer set up the lights because, you know, lighting is very rarely absolutely computer perfect. So makes it more realistic. Now you'll notice one thing here is that all these lights are in a straight line. That's because under the hood, the, the program thinks that these lights are all connected to a pipe. In the real world, lights are hung from pipes and pipes and trusses. So we've got those things right here. We go straight pipes, laced pipes, box trusses, things like that. If we add a box truss, uh, you don't see it right now, but then you say show pipes and truss, you turn it on and now you'll see it, <laughs> right? There it is, but it's not lit. You see the pipes are, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the lights are hanging underneath the truss. So you don't actually see the truss itself. So you need another light to light up the truss. Here's how you do that. Just go back here, click Add, and you're going to get the light. There it is right there, but it's pointing too much at the ground. So you come down here, and you can just drag this. Now it's washing everything out, and now it's closer to 90 degrees, so it's lighting up the truss, but it's not lighting up the ground. Okay? See how that all works. So here we go. We now have lights hanging from pipes and truss. You can change this. You can make it longer. Um, shorter, whoops, now look at that, I'm selecting the one that we just added. I need to go back and select the previous one. 
See, so you can change the uh, the length of these guys. You can add more lights, you know, at any time. Uh, change the spotlight angle at any time. It's so easy, so fast to do. Uh, you can also make it into uh, ring trusses, rectangular trusses, triangle trusses even, things like that. Watch the promo video. You'll see a ton of stuff that shows the capabilities. Now, besides having the trusses and the light fixtures, I'm sorry, and the lights, you can also show light fixtures. So if you just turn this guy on, it will now create the fixtures for you too. Isn't this cool? Now, just so you can see these fixtures a little bit better, I'm going to go to this second light and make it point at the ground a little bit. Uh, that will light up the background so that we can see these fixtures a little bit better. So the program comes with about 10 lights um, fixtures. We're going to be releasing more. Um, as you guys send in example projects, we'll probably give you free lights and stuff for you to, uh, to, to, you to work with. Um, so the cool thing about this, now check this out, is this. As you move the lights around, the fixtures are automatically animated for you. Isn't that cool? Uh, doing this in 3D programs takes a lot of work, man. You're really sort of killing yourself doing anything that looks like this. So we decided to make it super duper easy. Okay, so you got these things. Uh, the point at controls, like I was saying, you know, you can actually point them at things or have them follow things. Very super easy to do. Uh, that's the light fixtures. You can change these to, you know, any type. Actually, anything will um, will auto animate. It doesn't have to be an actual real motion control rig. So um, sometimes you get some crazy, crazy effects. The next thing we've got is show light cones. So what this does is this actually turns on the beam of the light so you can see it. Now we also have the icon showing up here. So I'm going to turn that off so you can see the beam a little bit better. All right, looks like this. And from this light cone material, we've got a bunch of different types of lighting cones that you can play with. Uh, these give you different um, moods, right? So like this is like a real punchy, hard light, uh, the sort of thing you'd see maybe in a dance club. There are different types that do different things. Uh, we've got like very ethereal types of lighting and um, and even some stuff where, you know, laser type lighting where the, la where the lights are really punching out and casting all sorts of really hard beams. Okay, uh, the Luca beam, that's a lot of fun. Let's do that one. And I'm gonna go back to here now and move the light again so that it's not lighting up the background and we get more of our lights showing up like this. Okay, so this is starting to look really, really cool. The last thing we're going to touch on, uh, well, briefly, here we've got our lighting actions, which create the blink patterns, the rotation motion patterns, and the light color changing patterns, all automatic without you having to set keyframes. You just set up rates and sequences, and it does it all for you. Super cool stuff. The other thing we're going to look at, though, are the flares. Now, you go to flare swatches right here, you know, this is sort of bugging me. I'm going to change this to a, um, I'm going to change this from a 360Q to, how about a Martin Mac, right? So now it's got this nice big fat fixtures coming out. Looks really nice. Excellent. Okay, now the flares are up here. The flares are, first of all, you need to know how to add them to a light track. So the way you do that is this. You click the light track, and then you click this button right here. You give that a click, you get a flare track, and it automatically adds a flare to it. Whichever one you call your default flare is the one that's going to be added automatically. Now you'll notice that we didn't get flares here as soon as you added, and that's because they're not pointing at the camera yet. As soon as we bring these things up, you'll see that now suddenly the things turn on. Now notice also how it's dropping to wireframe. That's because the interaction starts to slow down a little bit. So a new feature in the program is that it automatically bumps up the um, uh, drops to wireframe so that you get these really super fast interactions. Okay, so there you go. You're now using the lights themselves, and we can apply different flares by dragging them from here down to here. So by doing that, now we've got um, we've got these type flares. You'll notice they're all gold, and so if we tell it to use the light color like this, now the flares are going to end up being uh, the color of the lights. So we can adjust that. We can set the scale and get some really nice looking stuff here. Let's see, bigger, smaller, probably a little bit smaller. And then if we, okay, there we go. And hit render test and you'll see they're 
casting flares as they're moving along. So adding flares, adding lights, uh, getting the beams to show, and the last thing I'm going to touch on are the lighting rigs. The lighting rigs are fantastic. What these do, uh, I showed you how they do the three-point lighting, but underneath those are complete rig setups. So for instance, all you have to do is just click on this, drag and drop it, and in this case we're going to replace the previous lighting, and then we get this. Here is this nice fan of lights. There we go. And uh, that's automatically added to your scene so that you can then start using it or animating it. Okay, here's uh, searchlights. We've got, um, I'm going to replace the lights here. There's a tutorial on how to do these. Now lighting rigs are all the light tracks you select plus the flare tracks plus the animation that goes on them. So right here, this uh, searchlight has an animation. So I can immediately start using it just by dragging and dropping it into our scene. You can add more than one of these if you like, of course, and then uh, move these things around they'll animate just automatically using the uh, rotation actions that were previously set up. So this is a super cool way of um, getting your own animations to be reusable or exchanging these things with your friends or um, you know maybe purchase some professionally created ones from uh, third-party users. Uh, let's see, last thing are gonna be the materials. So let me show you some materials real quick. Uh, I'm gonna take these guys and uh, just delete those and uh, let's delete this too and just make a primitive okay so we'll do this we'll just create a back wall and zoom in on this little bit and then go to our materials now the materials have always been pretty decent as far as graphic design goes you get all these gradients and and chromes and glasses and stuff like that now we've upped it so that now we can create lots of cool other effects just by dragging and dropping. These all come with the, with the program. We've got weave patterns, brick patterns, um, some really nice marbles and uh, woods. And um, all these things are, again, just drag and droppable. So say you're setting something up, you wanted a nice, nice little stone, but you wanted it smaller. Select this guy, and then you can come down here and adjust the scale. These are all seamlessly tileable so that you can apply this to maybe the front of your titles or as a background or anything else that you need to use it for. A lot of these things are even controllable for, um, that boy is pretty. Um, you can change the colors on the fly. You can change uh, the speculars, the bumps, however much it's, uh, it's affecting it. Um, some of these even have uh, meshes, like right here. You've got a completely see-through um, uh, mesh pattern. So you've got a transparency map built in too. Like I said, these are all professionally designed, really nice looking stuff and some of these you can even change so uh, by changing the base color of these guys you'll get different um, effects like this so you'll still have the bump you'll still have the specular but then you can craft the color to fit whichever uh, project that you're working on okay so there's a real quick overview of what's going on uh, Pro Animator 7 it is super awesome check it out now